You're a psycho. You're crazy. Why can't you take a joke? Do you realize how stupid you sound? Why can't you be normal like my mates' wives? I keep telling you, but you forget. If you didn't do that, I wouldn't get so angry. No one else will love you like I do. Nobody else will want you. It's your fault you bruise easily. You are not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. Hi, I'm Jenny Drew. I'm an author and a cartoonist. I'm going to do a little workshop review today about how to make a very simple comic. You don't need to have any drawing skills, really simple techniques so that you can get the message across and you can tell the story how you want to tell it. One piece of A4 paper. I'm going to use slightly bigger paper today just so that you can see it, but a4 paper is ideal because you can photocopy it and then it basically here's one I made earlier so this is made out of one piece of A4 paper and it folds out into a comic like this and it's just origami style so once you've made it you just photocopy it on one side fold it up and you've got a comic good to go first of all you want to think about what's your comic going to be about um, I recommend that you get pens, lots of pens, you don't want to be held back with an absence of pens. I like to start by making a mind map and my colour shall be pink. You can break it down into different areas, so is this um, going to be things that have happened to you, so personal experiences. Is it going to be um, a passion or um, something you care about that you want to uh, spread a message about to people? An instruction book about how to do something? Like a skill that you have? Um, it could just be an imaginary story. A story that you've got in your head. So there's an example of some things that you could, that it could be about. Story, things that have happened to me, um, instruction book, or my passions or a cause. And then you can just break that down and uh, come up with ideas for each of those that you can then choose from and decide where you want to go with this. Anything you want, anything you want, it can be as weird as you want. Remember this is for your own this is for your own enjoyment and for your friends and your family for you to hand it out to them so it can be anything. Make a mind map and then go with the one that you're most drawn to. Go with the one that speaks to you, that says to you, I need to be told, I need to be put onto paper. What we're going to do is we're going to fold the piece of paper. So you fold it in half like that down the middle so the creases so two folds down the middle like this like that so it folds in that way and in that way the other two sides you want to fold back the other way so they meet in the middle like this There we go. So it should look like that, like a concertina with a fold down the middle. And you get your scissors and you cut that middle line. So you've got a gap like that, like a mouth. Like this. So now once you've got that, you can fold it into a comic. So look, go down, so it looks like that. And then you can fold these ones and fold that one. There you go, an eight page comic. All from one piece of paper. <clears throat> so you see, 
like that. And if you do it on an A4 piece of paper, like I said, you can just photocopy it and make them loads of them. You give them out, hand them out to people. Hooray! On a piece of paper, map out eight boxes and decide what's going to go on each box so that you can draw it in here afterwards, otherwise you'll get in a mess. That's the back page, so the content has six pages. Six pages to tell your story. Do the writing before you do the speak bubble, okay? So say if you're gonna write, hello, write, hello, then write hello first, and then do the speech bubble, like this. Because otherwise, you might end up like this. Draw in the speech bubble, and then you find you don't have room for the writing. So normally, people draw stick figures like this. Now that's okay, but it doesn't look, it's not, it's got flaws, okay? First of all, this figure's got no shoulders. It's also got no hips. So people do not look like this. There is no way to make this one look any different from this one. You can't give them clothes, you can't give them a body shape. They just look the same. It's not interesting to look at. Still just as easy way, but a different way to draw a stick figure or a stick figure. So you can draw a circle at the top, eyes halfway down. Then instead of drawing a line, draw a shape. So I tend to draw I don't tend to give them necks for some reason, but I tend to just draw like that. So it's kind of like a keyhole, you know? That's their body. And then their legs come off the corners, the bottom corners, and then their arms come off the top corners, like that. And then that way, you can give them clothes. Like if someone looks formal, you can make them look like they're wearing a suit. Or, see that? Or you could do, do a different shape for the body. You could do more of a circle and legs and arms like that. And maybe this person's got a design on their t-shirt. I don't know why I've just done a skull, but they're maybe a gothic type character. And you can also make them look different maybe by wearing a hat. So he's got a cap, look. So do things to make your characters look different, to give them, to make them more interesting. I'll draw six circles. Now if I just do dots in all of them, this is a neutral look. This is a face with no expression. You can keep them like that if they're an expressionless character. Now if I draw three with smiley faces and three with sad faces, mouths, just the mouths, I mean that's a very basic expression. Sad, 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 happy, happy, happy. Now the way to change it to make this character more complex is all in the eyebrows. So how can I make this character look sneaky? Downturned eyebrows. I'll change the eyebrows on all of them so that you can see how it works. So look, this is all just done by changing the lines. See how this person frowning, it's got a different facial expression to this person frowning. This person looks kind of like a little bit evil. This person looks angry. This person looks kind of like bittersweet maybe, like if you're saying goodbye to a loved one at an airport. 
This one's just like properly sad. This one's kind of like sad and surprised. And this one just is kind of dozy. So I put them down there like that. But if I put these ones, if I did these ones raised, then I guess they're just kind of like more happy, like quite upbeat. Experiment, draw, try and draw lots of facial expressions, like with different mouths and eyebrows, just to see how you can just change those simple faces, because also you can just change the mouth like that. See how that one's changed now? Or straight across like that? Or um, we could, so this, this top one, if we put a line there, see that? And then put another line and then color the top bit in black. Looks like he's shouting now, see that? And this one, so remember with the shouting, with the downturned mouth, the teeth are on the bottom. With the upturned mouth, the teeth are on the top. See that? You could do like a wiggly line maybe, that's kind of like, oh no, I don't know if I want to go to work anymore. So you can really like convey a lot of different emotions and what the character's thinking and feeling just by changing some real basic things on the face. So four keyhole people, let's see the different ways they can move. So arms in the air, and then maybe feet bent like that, looks like they're jumping. Uh, hands on the hips, legs outstretch. Looks like they're quite serious, about to tell someone off. Uh, we could have one arm in the air and one arm folded. And they're kind of like, they're about to go on Britain's Got Talent or something. Maybe one hand on the head. And one hand on the mouth. And he's kind of thinking, like, oh, I don't know. Hmm, maybe like that. I think you can. So see what you can do, see what you can do with the arms and legs. So say if this was one page, say if you were gonna have boxes on that one page, you could divide it up so that you can like it's a bit more like a comic strip. So you could like maybe have a close up in the first one. Close up, say, of a cup of tea. And then you can have like a narration at the bottom. I was bored. The words don't actually have to say what the picture is. So you don't need to write, I was drinking tea. You could have the picture of a cup of tea and the thought, I was bored. It just makes it more interesting. It's like really obvious to say, I was drinking tea and draw a cup of tea. But try thinking about, okay, you're the character in the space, right? What's the character thinking? What's the character seeing? So you could draw what the character's seeing and write what the character's thinking. I didn't like Bob. Bob looks happy enough. Let's give him some glasses. I was bored. I didn't like Bob, so like, you know, we're starting to get a picture of this character now. She's a bit grumpy. Bob could be my manager, mum's partner. Bob could be a neighbour. He could be my social worker. He could be my therapist. He could be my doctor, although I probably wouldn't call him Bob if he was my doctor, but maybe I would. And then you could have like, this is the, this is the scene that shows where we are. So it could just say, oh, let's just say he is my doctor for some weird reason. I call my doctor by his first name, Bob. So we could write surgery here. Reader can see what's going on in the person's head, can see like who they're communicating with and still what the person's thinking at the same time. Then they can see who, where they are. 
So it could be, I was bored, I didn't like Bob. It was the third time Dot, dot, dot. So it could be like, it was the third time I'd been, to, I'd been here this week. You see? So that's already telling the story. So that's a way to storyboard. You don't actually need to be a really brilliant drawer. It can just be really basic. Or like, like that, see? It really doesn't need to, because what's important is people want to hear your voice. Say if it was, um, you know, like a recipe book, you could decide, you don't need to get into this kind of storytelling lark. It could just be cut out pictures and stick them in. Or maybe you could draw, say like, I'm going to teach you how to make my cherry bakewell tart. And then sort of draw it. And then be like, ingredients. And do that. Write the ingredients and then put like instructions down there. People won't mind if that doesn't really look like the actual thing that you're trying to make. I think people will just think it's cute, you know? Wouldn't you think it was just really nice if you got given a handmade book, cooking book of somebody that you knew wasn't like an amazing artist, but they really cared about these um, recipes and they wanted to give them to you with their little cute drawings on it. And I would treasure it. Remember when you when you're if you're drawing it straight, it all goes on one side. But you have to work out. It doesn't go um, like it. You can't just guess that you, it wouldn't all go up the same way. One, two, three, four, five, six. You've got to fold it out and fold it up again and work it out. So say this is the one I made earlier. So this is one I made for um, kids that I work with about uh, about personal space. Don't be a space raider. Be a space protector, see? Um, so, but when I, so it's all obviously in the right order there. This was just something I made really quickly. But actually, when you fold it out, the pages are kind of in a different order and some of them are a different way up. So work that out before you go drawing on it because you don't want to draw on it and then it will some of it be upside down and all that business. So there we go, go away. Have a go, practice, make a couple, photocopy them, give them to your friends, give them to the people you care about. I hope you've enjoyed it, I hope you're enjoying all the other workshops. My name's Jenny Drew, my website is www.jennydrewsomething.co.uk. Thank you very much for having me and I look forward to seeing your stories out in the world sometime.